Hi, good afternoon. So we are going to give um, our lovely parents and caregivers another eight minutes, if that's okay with you. Um, and normally, if we have less than five participants, then we may have to um, reschedule. So we have another one. So we'll just give it a few more minutes. So um, I will come back on in a few moments. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. So yes, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Good afternoon. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. So nice to see you. Happy Friday. I hope you enjoyed um, this afternoon's assembly. I hope you got a chance to tune into the assembly. And of course, thank you so much for your time this afternoon on a, on a busy Friday. I know I'm sure you've got lots of, lots of things you want to be doing and places you need to go. So I do appreciate your time um, as I um, share with you some information about our primary years program. There will be an opportunity to um, answer questions at the end. So if you do have any questions, jot them down. Um, for those of you that came to uh, my early years PYP webinar a couple of weeks ago, um, it's really nice to have the opportunity to um, finish the session with a Q&A, so please do make a note of that and I will certainly try um, to make some time for that. So I'm going to share my screen in a moment and then um, we I will make a start, so just bear with me, thank you. Okay. Share my screen again, here we go. Okay, so you can all see my screen. So we're going to start today. Um, so I'm going to be introducing, going into some detail about the primary years program here at ACG School Jakarta. If you did come to the early years, um, webinar that I did a couple of weeks ago, I will be touching upon some things that I did cover, but in a slightly different way today. So I hope that this is informative and interesting and you, you have some takeaways that you can kind of digest and think about. And of course, if you have any follow up questions after this webinar, I'm more than happy for you to um, book an appointment with me. It can be a Zoom call and we can talk some more. It might be a situation um, pertinent to just you and your child. If you want any any advice or support whatsoever, I'm more than happy to do that. Okay, I'm going to be covering quite a lot of content this afternoon, okay? So just bear with me. Um, you will have a copy of this um, presentation as well, so you'll be able to have a look at that later on as well. So, um, as I did last time, I want to just have a, a minute to hand over to the amazing students that we have at ACG School Jakarta, and just to give you a little, I guess a little snapshot of um, what inquiry, because that's what I'm talking about today, inquiry, agency and action looks like here at school. snapshot of the kind of learning that we do at ACG School Jakarta, just a little snapshot of inquiry in action. Okay, so the goals for this session then, I'm going to kind of go run through the key elements of our primary years program, our PYP program. I'm going to talk about inquiry-based learning. I'm going to talk about student agency, and I hope that you can learn more about student action and what agency looks like and how you can support that at home. So there's quite a lot of information to share this afternoon. 
I wanted to start by sharing with you the, um, the mission statement of the International Baccalaureate. And that's simply because that is definitely, it aligns with our values and our own mission at, here at ACG School Jakarta. And that is about developing inquiring, knowledgeable and caring students. It's about having a challenging and rigorous curriculum and assessment. And it's also about encouraging our students to become active, compassionate and lifelong learners. So really that mission statement of the IBO, the International Baccalaureate, really does align with what we believe as a school at ACG School Jakarta. If you wanted to find out more information about IB, the International Baccalaureate programs, of course, there's a wealth of information on the website. On, on, on Google, you could Google it. There's also YouTube, you can find out more lots of information that you can find out about this program okay so i'm going to kind of move on now to the primary years program now this is an inquiry based model for those of you that have um, visited our school i know it's been quite difficult for parents to obviously come onto campus but if you've had the privilege um, of having that face-to-face -face school tour if you are familiar with our school you will know that the primary years program is inquiry based it's focused on real life situations problem solving and students work on a unit of inquiry in year one to six they cover six units of inquiry and in kindergarten it's four if you look at the image to the right you will notice there there are rings outer rings moving into the center and if you look at the center that's the student and we talk about this a lot the students being at the heart of everything that we do every decision we make the students are at the heart of it. We are a very, very student-centered school. And this of course aligns with our PYP program. So around the outer edge, we have, we have what are called our transdisciplinary themes. And within the, those themes, they create, they, we build our units of inquiry. And then within the third ring, we have our subjects, our single subjects. And all of these subjects are what we call integrated into our units of inquiry. So perhaps different to how you went to school, all of our subjects are integrated. So it enables the students to learn on a much deeper level. So when they're learning a particular skill in maths, that skill can be transferred across other subjects like science and language and PE. And then within that, we have what we call agency and action, which I'm going to talk about today. And they're really key factors of our PYP program. And then we have the exhibition. If we have any student um, parents here today whose students are in year six, they will do their PYP exhibition. And then in the middle, we have what we call our approaches to teaching and learning. But the most important thing about our inquiry is that it's an opportunity for students to make connections and to learn on a deep level where the engagement is high, they're focusing on real life situations that really matter. And actually what we're doing is through this way, of delivering our programme, we are setting our students up for that 21st century success, for, for developing their skills, their knowledge, their understanding, and perhaps preparing them for jobs that don't even exist yet. So, of course, um, it's important that I also refer to our curriculum. So, of course, we have our PYP program and within that we have our Cambridge curriculum framework and this we, we have this for English, maths and science. And for those of you that may, uh, may be not so familiar with Cambridge, this is a great way to ensure that seamless transition from our primary to our secondary lower Cambridge programme. And this enables the students to become confident, responsible, innovative and really engaged. And that's for English, maths and science. But as I said, going back to our, our PYP programme, the English, maths and science are very carefully integrated into our units. So when they do science, it's really meaningful. When they do English and maths, it's really meaningful because it's part of the bigger picture the bigger picture of their unit of inquiry. So if you have 
As I said earlier, being to visit our campus and come along to the primary corridor, you are hit by a huge wall. And on this wall is our programme of inquiry. And this is for 21-22. Now we work really hard as a primary team to develop our programme of inquiry so that it is exciting, challenging, rigorous, and it encompasses that transdisciplinary learning that we want. So you will notice through our um, units of inquiry that the subjects are integrated. You will see there, I know the print is small, but you will see our central idea, our lines of inquiry, and we have the concepts, and I'll talk more about conceptual learning shortly, and then the time frame. So as I said, years one to six, cover six units of inquiry, ranging from a semester long to six weeks long, and they move through those throughout the year. So I guess one question that some of you may have about primary, um, you know, what does a PYP classroom look like? I know how I went to school, but how is it, how is it the same? How is it different? So I've kind of thought about that in terms of um, what it does look like on a practical day-to-day um, basis and and how how that looks like through our teaching and learning, um, and so you know you might some of the um, the examples to the left you might think yes that's how I went to school it was very much textbook it was rote learning memorization um, the teacher at the front the children sitting at desk please get out your workbooks, work from page 25. And when we finish, you're going to close the book and we're going to go on to the next subject. Um, and so that's kind of the, the, the traditional way. And of course, if we look to the right, you will be able to see that in a PYP classroom, we have what we call open-ended inquiry. It is about real life investigations where the, the student and the teacher, they're part of the learning community. It's about using many, many sources and resources. So by that it's guest speakers, it's going on field trips, it's going on virtual tours, of course, now with the pandemic. It's about making those connections to real life. It's about the teacher, not standing at the front of the class as the expert, but actually as the facilitator. Let's find out, how do you want to explore this more? And um, it's actually putting that student agency, which I'm going to talk about shortly, that student voice choice and ownership of their learning. And that really does enable that deep, solid learning to happen um, they, they, because they're able to access so many different materials and learn in lots of different ways. So a wide choice of print. Language is transdisciplinary. So we try and give students maximum opportunities to read, to write, to speak, to listen, to, to, ex, to expose them to a wide variety of literature, biographies, nonfiction, stories, poetry, all through their units of inquiry. So it's very, very rich in print and literature. And of course, our assessment, of course, we have assessments that come at the end of the units of inquiry, but also we have those really, really important ongoing assessments. And what's very important in a PYP school is that the process is just as important as the product, if not more. It's about the child's learning journey as we give that, that feedback to them. How did you get on with that piece of work? Where do you need to go next? I can see that you've done a great job. You have achieved what we set out to do today, but what do you need to do next? So it's identifying those next steps and supporting every child in that learning process. And um, so for those of you that have, I'm sure all of you have received um, a unit of inquiry newsletter. This is an example of a year six newsletter. And that's really important for our parent community that, of course, as a new unit of inquiry comes up and your child starts a new unit of inquiry, that you know exactly what they're learning about. As I said, the subject integrations, which subjects are going to be integrated and how? What will they be learning in science? What particular skills will they be developing? What particular strands of maths will they be developing? So for this one, the transdisciplinary theme is how the world works. Then we have the central idea 
the lines of inquiry, the concepts. I'm going to talk about ATLs, the learner profile, um, and then the subjects and the integration. So all of that makes up our unit of inquiry. So I really hope that when you receive your, your class UOI newsletter through Seesaw, that that gives you an idea of what the students will cover, how they will learn, and the kind of subjects that they will be um, working on for this particular unit. Where there is not a subject integration, there will be what we call standalone units. So for example, in maths, students will always do number and pattern and function. So we have that rigorous curriculum. So the students are continuing to develop those skills, those important foundational skills in maths, in English and science. And then it's integrated into the unit, but of course we have those standalone units as well. So phonics, and guided reading, writing, story writing, and all of those really important parts of our primary curriculum. And they will be delivered rigorously and in an ongoing way, regardless of the unit of inquiry. Where we can integrate is, the, is when the most, the, the most powerful learning occurs. So that's where you get the strongest connections. So for example, if the students um, are and are learning how to write a newspaper report, it might be that that is integrated in a how the world works unit on um, the year three at the moment, they're doing um, a changing states of the earth unit of inquiry, so it's very science topic. So that means they will be able to write newspaper reports on the changing states of earth. So we try and include those writing genres so that they link and support really strongly with the units of inquiry. So I know I'm giving you a lot of information here. So I do hope that um, you're all keeping up with me, but we will have an opportunity to discuss it later anyway. Okay, so I've, I've, I've said the word inquiry quite a few times now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the inquiry cycle because inquiry doesn't just happen. We need to think really carefully and plan for it very explicitly. So as a primary team and as the primary um, years coordinator, I will um, meet with my primary team and we will plan our units of inquiry really carefully. And we always start with the tuning in. And this is involving the students. What do you know about this unit of inquiry? What do you want to know? And how can we find out? So it's that student agency, it's that voice. How can we find out about this? And then we move through to finding out. That's where we research, we read, we explore, we use different sources, um, various sources to find out different information. And then we work that out. We might write, we might draw, we might, we might create models. And again, this is about catering for all of our learners. So during that finding out stage, how can different students find out in the ways that work best for them? Some students might use reading and writing as a way that they want to find out. Some students like to listen, use audio, use video. So what we try and do is use a, a wide variety of sources, which is going back to the original point about the PYP classroom. We're always trying to find creative ways to, to really deliver our inquiry, our inquiry cycle and work through that with them. Of course, through inquiry, as it says, students not only develop their approaches to learning, they gain knowledge, they develop their conceptual understandings, and they develop their learner profile attributes, all of which I'm going to continue to work on. But I wanted to just give you an idea of the inquiry cycle. And then on the next page, I will show you this is the inquiry cycle in action. So I'm not just saying it, it really happens. It's alive. It's living in all of our primary classrooms. As you can see, there's student work, there's wanderings, there's the wonder wall. That's really important. Listening to the children. What do they want to find out about this unit of inquiry? How can we find out about that? How can we research? So we have our lines of inquiry, which we, we work on those. Can you see this one at year one? Line of inquiry, they started with our own culture. They moved on to what makes culture unique. 
there's examples of student work. Over to the right, we have um, the year four unit that was on human body systems. And as you can see, right at the beginning, when I talked about different materials and resources, there's real artifacts, there's books, there's nonfiction, there's fiction. And our, our displays, our units of inquiry, our cycles are alive with work. Okay, so they change and they reflect the work that is happening each week, week on week, and it's updated with their students' work. And for, our, for students coming into school, this is, this is a celebration of everything that they're doing. They can see their work, they can see their wanderings. We refer back to this inquiry cycle. And this is what guides, this is what guides our, our work. Okay, so we're just going to move on to um, the learner profile now. So I have touched upon that earlier, but the learner profile is basically central to what the PYP definition is of what we call being internationally minded. So for the learner profile attributes, we as a school, a PYP school, these are explicit in everything that we do. So these are explicit in our units of inquiry. So often we focus on three learner profile attributes, which we will really focus on for that six week unit of inquiry. And we will develop their awareness of what that looks like. So if we take one from this image, principled. So the first thing we do is we unpack what does it mean to be principled? It means, and we do it in child speak, so we will say, doing the right thing, yes, making good choices, doing the right thing. And then when we have unpacked the, the learner profile, we will then celebrate every time we see it. We will encourage the students to develop that learner profile attributes. And ultimately what we want them to do is we want them to live these learner profile attributes in the way that they speak, the way that they act, the way that they talk and the way that they operate, not only at school and at home. If you want to find out more about learner profile attributes, the characteristics, you can click on there. I also, in my monthly newsletters, um, this month coming out, last month I did, um, I focused on five learner profiles in primary and ways that you can support. This month I am focusing on the, the next five learner profile attributes and ways that you can support at home. So watch out for that coming up in this month's newsletter. But I told you, you know, we think about um, rewording it in, in, in child speak. So just have a look just for a moment um, at the learner profile qualities. So um, which ones do you think remind you of your child? I know with my daughters, I certainly know that I would say one is a real communicator. One is very principled. I don't know if you have more than one child, but in my case, they're both very different. Um, but the idea being that, you know, as students graduate from an IB school, we want them to have internalized all of these and they lift them in everything that they do. That's what we want for our students and that they, they demonstrate them in their everyday lives. So I am so inquiries, I am curious. This is a really big one for us and in, to be an inquirer. We want them to show that curiosity and that starts right in kindergarten. And we encourage that so much. And we do that by listening to them, responding to their ideas. We absolutely love it when they show that inquiry. How do you do? Look at this. How do, you, how do you find out about that? Come on, let's find out together. And as I said earlier, it's about the teacher being the facilitator. And for a child, that's absolutely wonderful for their, their teacher um, to be able to give them that time, that energy to develop their inquiries. And I think that's just one point to make about time and an inquiry model, we give, we give them time. If you give a child time to really inquire, to have those deep inquiries, then that um, results in deep learning for sure. And so that's something that we need to do, give them time, listen to their ideas, give them time to research and then to think. So this is where the inquiry cycle kind of develops itself and the learner profile attributes develop through the inquiry cycle. So, okay, we want to find out this. How can we do that? Well, 
how can I find out about that? You need to go on the internet. What do you need to find out? Well, I need to find out about maps. Okay, off you go. Be a thinker. Off you go and find out. Communicators, that's one that they will do all of the time. Knowledgeable, that's about finding out. I know lots of things, but more importantly in a PYP school, it's not about knowing it. It's about how you use it. So it's okay to have the knowledge. That's one aspect of course. But what do we want them to do? We want them to use and apply that knowledge and use that and apply that knowledge across all contexts and all disciplines and all subjects. Being principled, of course, that's really important to us. And we have a school full of wonderfully principled students, caring, open-minded. Um, this is a great one. We have some wonderful units of inquiry that really develop um, that learner profile of being um, open-minded. We have a new unit on diversity, on equal opportunities, on you know raising their awareness of social issues. Um, so that you know these are very, very important um, important learner profile qualities and ways that we can do that through our units. Being balanced, we have a really strong unit in year two um, about healthy behaviours. And so through, um, through the primary years program and our units of inquiry, they will develop these and they will work through these year on year on. So every year that they travel through the primary years program, they will hit all 10 learner profile um, attributes, all of them. So then by the time they get to year six, of course, all of this should be embedded and they should it should just be second nature for them and of course as they graduate and um, graduate from the dp program of course you know that's what they do internationally minded people young people that care about the world care about the planet do the right thing are respectful human beings okay so moving on so I touched upon the key concepts early. Now, this is really, really important for us. And because across all curriculum areas, um, the PYP concepts are taught through inquiry. So again, going back to our units of inquiry, um, we specifically focus on three concepts. OK, so out of the seven, we focus on three and these are explicitly identified and then we will develop these in all subject areas. So, for example, if we're thinking about form, what is it? We, will, we might focus on form, the concept of form, not only in, um, in our UOI, but in science, in maths, in PE, um, form in art. And then they get, again, that really deep understanding. And it allows students to really apply their knowledge, their learning um, in other areas of the curriculum. So approaches to learning, this again is a key aspect of our primary years program. And this is based on the belief that, um, you know, students need to learn how to learn. And it's fundamental to how they develop throughout their primary years. And we have, they're, they're kind of divided into five, five subsets. So going back to our units of inquiry, we will focus on two approaches to learning and these are very 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 important skills again that start from kindergarten if you look at the approaches to learning skills um i, I wonder which ones you think that we focus on the most to start with in kindergarten which ones do you think i can certainly tell you that we oh are we um, we always start with social skills that's one. And um, that's a really, really important one. We start with in kindergarten, um, just developing that collaboration, sharing, turn taking, um, you know, being able to listen to, to others ideas. And of course, second to that in kindergarten to start with is communication skills and just starting with the basic speaking and listening. And within these sub skills, there are there are many, many um, sub skills within that. So there, there are many very, very important approaches to learning skills um, that we need to be very, very explicit with within our primary years program. Um, research, um, again, is key to inquiry and they'll research and not just um, research using different sources, but then it's about their presenting skills. They present individually, 
we encourage them to present in groups and they present in lots of different ways. It might be through technology, it might be through stories, it might be through art, it might be through dance. So research and presenting is, is key to them being able to demonstrate what they now know, understand and are able to do. Okay. So I guess moving on to agency then, and um, this is just a quote from, um, from the International Baccalaureate. And it's so important now for us, um, you know, agency is the power to take meaningful and intentional action and acknowledges the rights and responsibility of the individual. And, the way, and simply put in kindergarten, in primary and kindergarten, we say, we need to give our students voice, choice and ownership over their learning. And that's at the centre. And you can see from the image there that voice, choice and ownership. So as a primary team, we're constantly asking ourselves, how can we give agency? How can our students be drivers of their own learning? Because if they're empowered and they are drivers and they are making decisions about their own learning, then they are completely invested in their own learning and they will be highly motivated in what they're doing. And what does motivation equal? It equals learning and progress. If a student is motivated and engaged, it of course leads to learning and progress. And that's what we want, agency, um, when we see it, and we see it all the time, we see children happy, so happy, so engaged in what they're doing. Um, I've recently been in many primary classrooms, and you can see agency because they have, you know, they're busy and there's, there's, they're industrious. They know what they're doing. There's purpose. They're engaged. They're focused. You know, they complete the activity um, in a way that they really enjoy it. They understand it. They can talk about it because they own it. They know what they are doing. So um, and a really easy way to look at it as well, agency, is looking at um, passive and active learning. So we're looking at our students. We want our students to be actively engaged in their learning. So that's how we set up their learning experiences. And again, we can do that through inquiry. And we're constantly asking ourselves, how can we deliver our program in the most exciting way, in a way that's hands on, that gives our students the ability to be creative, to solve problems, to be innovative, innovative. So all of those skills that they need for the 21st century, as we've said. So having a look at this. I came to school, I analysed, I made decisions, I made notes, I worked through problems, I, you know, I compared, contrasted, that idea of finding connections, for the students to find connections with what they're doing is absolutely key to that deep learning, and I reflected on what I did, so, and that takes time, they need time to do that, and um, so there's just some things to kind of keep in your mind, the agency is certainly linked to active learning, and there's just two examples of the joys of having our students back in class, you know, it's not just, so science is alive, science is, is, is physical, it's active, it's experimenting, it's finding out, but then it doesn't stop there. It's then going back and analyzing and reflecting on what they did, what worked, how can I connect with that learning? What do I need to, need to do to take it further? So agency is, is literally, it's, just, it's um, the center of what we do putting the student at the heart of what we do and encouraging them to have that voice, the choice and the ownership of their learning. Okay, so not much more now. Thank you. You're doing well. Now, this has come straight from our PYP. And um, this is from the IBO, actually. Um, so it's a bit small right now, but again, I can send it to you. And really, this is just ways that you can support agency. And if you look at the circle, it kind of talks about an inquiry stance. So I'm sure that you've all been met with a question. So often our, ch uh, you know, our children will ask us a question. And the idea there is that you take an inquiry stance and that will support the agency. So instead of giving them the answer, actually you meet their question with a question. Hey, how could we find that out? 
Okay, let's do that. Let's go on the internet. Let's read a book. And that, so it runs down. There's some examples down there. Be prepared to inquire together. Ask them an open-ended question. What did you notice? Why do you think that? And then also be a learner with them. You can take an inquiry stance and that will really support them with their own inquiry. So moving on, we talked, we touched upon conceptual understandings, didn't we? But again, this is about um, how do you find out more? And if you look to the, to the right, there's an example of the concepts for you to break that down a little bit more. But I love this example. So concepts can be applied to everything. So form, function, connection, change, causation, perspective, responsibility. So if you look at the examples, it doesn't matter what you're looking at. So let's look at a flower. We can, we can, we can develop that conceptual understanding. What is it like? How does it work? How does it change? How is it connected to other things? And then you can see then how that can, how the conceptual understandings really develop that deep thinking and that deep understanding. So there's just some examples. There's something there about agency and inviting the children to have a voice. So it might, and supporting that choice. So at home, it might be as simple as um, creating a menu for dinner. It might be thinking about giving them a choice about what you're all going to do at the weekend, thinking about activities you're going to do. Maybe it's holiday plans, but it's about giving them that voice and choice and how you can do that. So there's just some examples of ways that you can support your child and that idea of agency. So I'm going to move on now um, to action. And of course, this is an integral part of what we do. So basically, we want our students to take action as, an, as a result of the learning process. If they can do that, that means that the learning is deep. They are able to use and apply their knowledge, understandings, their feelings, their opinions, their, their ideas, and apply it to their everyday lives, whether that's in school or at home. So this is really, really important. And you can see the cycle there. Successful inquiry most certainly leads to agency. So we're always looking for it. Agency comes within kind of, we look at the, the, the five headings over there. Um, so it might be that they, um, as a result of their learning process, they changed their lifestyle choices. So in year two, they did a big unit on um, healthy behaviors. And we were looking for those examples of where students had taken action. And maybe they said to their parents at home, I, I don't want to eat candy anymore. I don't think that that's a healthy behavior. I want to start doing mindfulness. And basically they will share that with you. So as, as teachers, we're always looking for examples of when a child has taken action as a result of the learning. Now, action can be something, it's a change in their thinking. It can be something that they say or it can be something that they actually do. It can be something that they do for themselves um, with their family or even the wider community. It could be collecting litter. That's a, a simple example of taking action within the community. But really a main goal of the PYP is for our students to, you know, to take care of the world around them and take action in their everyday lives. We celebrate that here at ACG School Jakarta by um, um, as giving them a certificate, as you can see, um, the bottom right there. We love to give our Taking Action at Home certificates. And as I said, just moving on to the action um, subheadings. These are the kinds of things that we might be looking for. It might be just that they're talking to their friends and family. They want them to think differently about the way that they live as a family. It might be that as a result of their learning, they take more care over their belongings or they eat, they make um, better, better uh, food choices. So there's just some examples of that. Now, I wanted to share with you a real example of action in our school, and this is from taken from a year one class, actually, um, and they're doing a unit on homes. And one of Miss Finney's students made, um, she made a, a houseboat, 
and she proudly brought it into school. And it was absolutely amazing. Now, that's where, as teachers, we can take the learning further. So we celebrate that. We say, wow, that's absolutely amazing. Now, a houseboat. Thank you for sharing that. What do we know about houseboats? Okay, let's find out. So we create a learning area based on the student's action piece. So the inquiry starts again. The child feels empowered. They feel so proud of themselves and we're able to take the learning further. So this is authentic learning as part of the unit of inquiry. And as you can see, they're looking at research skills as a result of the houseboat. So the teacher cleverly and carefully plans to take further steps in moving them on. And then there's just some other pieces of action from year one. So we're always looking for student action. We're always looking for examples. So please share just a quick message on Seesaw of when your child takes action. Remember, it could be something that they've thought about and they've shared with you. It could be something physical. It could be an action, anything at all. And as a result of their learning in school, we want to hear about it. Um, and we use that within to, to build and to develop our unit of inquiry. Okay. okay, nearly at the end now, I wanted to share with you um, an important piece really about assessment. So, okay, we have our rich, our exciting inquiry, our units of inquiry, but it's really important that, um, of course, as part of the PYP programme, that we understand that assessment is an absolutely integral part of our teaching and learning. So we have our ongoing assessments, and these are called our formative assessments. So we're always making notes, we are keeping records of our students in their units of inquiry, in their maths, in their reading. So we have our records. We know what their net, we can identify their next steps and their goals, what they need to work on next. I'm sure you've heard from Seesaw. We will give them their teacher to student feedback so they know where they did a great job and where they need to develop. And all of this is then shared with you in various ways. So our assessments might include photographs, videos, written work, oral recordings, their own physical work. And then of course, it is, com it is communicated with you through our parent student teacher conferences. And we have one at the beginning and we have one in, term in semester two. And then you also receive two written reports, one in semester one, one in semester two, and they also have their wonderful Seesaw digital portfolio. So it's just really important that you can see how we assess and why we assess and what we assess. Okay, lots of information shared in that, in that uh, nearly an hour. Thank you so much for sticking with me and listening. I do have some key vocabulary there for you to refer to because we've touched upon IB, International Baccalaureate Programme, PYP, Transdisciplinary Themes, Inquiry, International Mindedness, ATL, Approaches to Learning, Learner Profile, Agency, Central Idea, that's in the, the units of inquiry and lines of inquiry as well. So I just wanted to add that in there for you. You've, you've probably learned a lot this afternoon. Well, I hope you have. Um, I think, yes, that is me finished. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time and commitment on a Friday afternoon. I will stop sharing my screen now. So um, if you did have any questions that you would like to share with me, I'm more than happy to answer them. If not, I know it's a busy Friday afternoon for you all. The weekend is upon you. Um, and I'm also happy to say goodbye. So um, I will leave that up to you. Yes, good afternoon, Erin. Um, just, just a quick question. I have um, a, a year six son, right? Um, sometimes when we give them choice, like what do they want to learn, um, yeah. how can parents be supportive or, you know, try to, um, uh, you know, um, 
direct them to yeah. to you know what's more important right right yeah. sometimes you know they have they have um, a lot of things they have to do at home homework but they prefer to do something I know. Um, yeah i know so, maybe, oh. i mean to me probably um literacy or mathematics would yes. be more important but for them maybe it's art or yeah. music you know no yes. Um, yes how, how should i you know should yeah. i just leave it that way or me because i think his main interest is music ah. i'm not sure how how do okay. i you know Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, of course, um, what I would definitely say is, and this is for all parents, please foster their passions and their interests. That is, it's wonderful to hear that you recognize that your child has a, a keen interest in music. Um, so, you you know, really, really develop and foster that love and um, because that will grow. And I'm sure if it's something that he takes further in his career, he will thank you for it. I'll give you an example. You know, my daughter, very passionate artist from, you know, the eight, from a very, very early age. And we've developed that and fostered that. And it's wonderful to see that now. But of course, it's balance. So I think it's all about balance. And it's also about um, setting those expectations of what you would like them to do. Of course, at the moment, things are so challenging for our, our students, aren't they? You know, they're online and then, they, you know, they, they have that precious time at school, which I know is wonderful for them. So I think it's, it really is all about balance. And also keeping mind the time, you know, they, they have a very long, busy day and we do advise our students not to work, um, you know, so late after, after the school day and um, just for we need to nurture, we need to look after them mentally as well as academically and socially and look after them. And it might be um, that it's better to not have a painful hour of trying to get something done at the, at the end of a busy day that maybe he comes back to it fresh. Um, but I think it's about setting the expectations for him and giving him that independence, going back to the ATL's responsibility. This is what I need to do. I need to do this. Um, but 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 actually that all of the subjects are important. And if you have um, if you have a child that has a particular um, interest in the arts, that that should be developed. I, I, you know, I'm going to to say that going back again to early years um, um, you know my our philosophy is that children have 100 languages and some children love to um, they, they work on maths and science they have that scientific brain some children have a creative mind and they are so passionate and gifted in the arts so you really need to know your child what makes them tick like that's the first thing I want to find out when I, when our students go through admissions tell me what they like what are they interested in what do they like to do once you find that of course math science English they're so important but if they are passionate creative children we want to foster that and grow that and develop that because that might be stay it might end up being architects or musicians or you know so i think is that does that make sense right yeah yeah it makes sense it's just you know um as parents i would think you know math and, and science and literacy are, are the you know they are. really the foundation right but, they are. yeah they are, they are absolutely, of course, of course, they, they absolutely are. But as I said, within the school day, I think there has to be a point where, you know, they, they, they get that time um, where they, they don't do any work, they have that rest time. And, um, you know, of course, if there are things that, you know, on, on a personal level, if there's things that he needs to, if he's not managing to get through, then, you know, of course, you know, speak to the teacher and um, have a chat about that. And because what we don't want is him working very late and, you know, and obviously getting very stressed about things. We don't want that. It's just, it's balance, isn't it? Everything is, is, right. is balance, yeah. balance. for sure. Yeah. Thank you. I know you attended the early years one. I really appreciate your time very much. Does anybody else have any other questions? Okay. All right, then. Well, I'm always here. Um, if you need to, um, anyone needs to follow up with me about anything, 
um, you know, just so just so proud of the students. I have to tell you, while I have the opportunity, whenever I can, I'm just so proud of them. They're working incredibly hard, and it's so wonderful to see them in school. And you know, the the, the stuff that's going on, the, the stuff that's going on in the classrooms is absolutely fantastic. Um, and I know it's not easy for everyone, you know, the, the long days, the Tuesday, Thursday and in and out. And hopefully that will change in time. Um, but testament to you all that you're here on a Friday afternoon. Thank you so much and um, have a wonderful weekend. OK, thank you. Thanks again. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful weekend, too. Bye bye. 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 Thank you. Bye bye.